Hi, I'm Jane at Rockin' Worms. I hope you're having a good evening. What I'm going to do tonight is work on my long bin, which I have had previously set up in a wedge method. But with the holidays, I put a lot of my bins on, you know, slow down mode and did different things with them than I would normally do. And the long bin was no exception. I basically let the bin run and I haven't done anything with it since before Christmas. So let's get into the bin and see what we have because like I said, it's been several weeks. So I want to, you know, see what's going on in the bin. And I'm also going to share with you in this content video how I have turned very long term food into fast food. So if that's something you're interested in, come along with me and we'll talk about it. Okay, let's get into the bin. So this is the long bin. Like I said, I normally have this set up in the wedge method, but what I did for the holidays is I basically said, forget about the wedge for a little bit. And let me just do a top covering of pre-compost. So I actually did not put in a food zone I just put pre-compost on top. So I expect that I will see worms distributed throughout the bin because they have not been lured into the what I call the working end of the bin, the food zone end of the bin. So let's see if that is indeed the case as we do a quick analysis of where we are on the bin. All right, so the first thing I notice is the texture of this top material, this top layer. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but I know that this top layer is actually mostly cow manure. Now they started working on it, but this isn't really castings. This is more the cow manure. And again, I can, I can tell because not only does the texture look different than castings, but also it's softer. It's much softer. And that is a sign of the cow manure being um, worked on, but worked on last, okay? So this means to me that this end of the bin is not ready to be sifted for castings because it's not castings. There's still a lot of cow manure in there. So what I'm going to do then is do a little aeration and mix the cow manure back in so it is more distributed throughout the bin so the worms can continue to work on it. I'm going to pick out this little piece of orange thing. I get these little pieces of orange plastic randomly throughout my bins and I do believe it does come from the cow manure because, or um, yeah, the cow manure, because it gets mixed in with the mulch piles out in the pasture. And the workers for the uh, tree guy that I get my mulch from, um, they sometimes just throw their lunchtime garbage in the back of the truck. And that can include, uh, you know, plastic bottles with, uh, colored tops on them, orange colored tops, if you know what the kind of drink I'm talking about. So those little pieces of plastic do show up. All right, so um, yeah, this is light and fluffy. It feels, again, very soft and a little bit on the dry side to my hands, but you can again see that the worms are all throughout the bin. And if I do the little moisture test, let me throw it, you know, not throw out, but get some of these worms out. I'm gonna do a gentle squeeze, just a gentle squeeze, and see how it holds together very easily. And it breaks apart fairly easily. That means that although it feels dry to me, or drier to me, the worms think it's fine, and the moisture really is there. So that's one of the things, um, just as a kind of side tip there, is sometimes the moisture level in our bins look really on the dry side to us and they're not, okay? So always feel 
you know, comfortable doing your little squeeze test to test the moisture with the squeeze test because that's a little bit more reliable than just going on visual observation. All right, so I've just aerated this. Otherwise, it looks beautiful. I just need them to work on this a little bit longer to break down more of that uh, cow manure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set this back up kind of in the wedge method as far as starting that up again and uh, setting up a food zone down on the working end of the bin and uh, at the same time let them, you know, start finishing up these bits of cardboard which is left over from the pre-compost. Remember I said I just layered it with pre-compost right before Christmas. So they still have plenty of food to work on on this end. This bin would also be a great candidate for foraging. But I'm going to give them a little extra feed anyways. And I probably will be doing foraging next time I get into this bin. All right. So I am going to show you... Um, the turning long food into fast food here in just a second because it's part of the food zone okay it's part of it's going to be part of the feed so it just goes right along with that so i'm going to put in uh, some of the pre-compost this is just pre-compost it does not have the sifted cow manure in it no particular reason why i just didn't get around to mixing it in so pre-compost is what they get i want to use the ubiquitous Napkin, still working on using the napkins from when I had company back at the beginning of November. Now, what I'm going to do is put in a layer of cooked potatoes. Potatoes go uh, much better in your worm bins if they are cooked versus raw, okay? And it's not the long-term food into fast food that I'm going to share with you, but it is in that category or can be in that category because if you put a raw potato in here basically what tends to happen is it dehydrates even though there's a lot of moisture in your bin and it becomes like a rock and it will last forever but if you cook it first either boil or instapot it you know whatever you're doing um your worms get into it right away all right so one of the other long term foods is avocado, right? I'm a big avocado fan, which is going to go on top of this food here. Hold on a second. I want to just add a little bit more cabbage. This is again, cooked cabbage. All right. So avocado, I'm a big fan of avocado because of the high fat content, calorie content. It helps make my worms chunky. But when you uh, have avocado, right, a lot of times you also have the pit and the shell, right? So I'm sure most of you know what an avocado pit looks like, but it looks like this. And if you put this in your worm bin, it will stay like this for a very long time. And I, it can be a year, it can be two years, it can be even longer. Eventually it will soften, because this has actually been out in my chicken run, but it will soften, break apart, and your worms will get into it. There's a little ant. Um, your worms will get into it and eat it, but it takes them a very long time, okay? I am personally not a big fan of having super, super long-term food in my worm bins because they get in my way, okay? I'm always working around them. I got to move them out. I got to move them back. If I'm sifting, they're in my sifters. I'd much rather have my long-term food be more in the couple of weeks range, okay? But this is good worm food and I'm not going to waste this. I'm not going to throw it out. So, how am I going to turn this super long food into something that is more in the time frame that I'm looking for? You know, a couple weeks, a month, something like that. Well, I found a way. And what I did is 
I soaked the avocado pit to soften it up because it's just easier to cut that way. I cut it into chunks, you know, with the old butcher knife. And in my case, I dehydrated it for several hours overnight, not super long time, but you know, like overnight. And you could also use it in your oven, okay? You could just put it in your oven at the lowest temperature, 170 degrees. Technically you're cooking it, not dehydrating it, but you know, close enough is good enough in this case. And what you're doing is drying the pit down, okay? And then you can, which one's the pits? Oh, here's the pits. Then you can actually powder it up in your blender, food processor, magic bullet, whatever you've got, and it turns into this fantastic powder. So now I can add avocado pit benefits right into my worm bin as a fast food because it's so small, the worms are gonna come in and just be able to stuff it right into their mouths. And guess what? I did the same thing. Let me see if I, <laughs> I'm just labeling it because otherwise I can't tell, the, well, I can tell the difference because one is much darker than the other, but you can see otherwise they're very similar. This is the avocado skins, which again, make a great place for your worms to hang out in your bin, but take a long time to break down. So what I did is I put the avocado skins and I dehydrated them. I did not clean the skins out. You know, I had scooped out the inside with the, you know, the avocado meat, but what was left behind of the avocado meat stayed on the skins, didn't care. And it came out and it was dried and I powdered it up. So now this is fast food. And you can do it with other things such as, here is pumpkin seeds. These are dirty because they have been in my worm bins for months and months and months and months and months. And after a while, honestly, it just starts to annoy me. So what I have done is pulled out the seeds. You know, in, in the past I would throw them away, but now I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna waste this worm food. So what did I do? I made sure they were dry and I put them through the old blender. And now I have squash seeds that I can use as a much faster food in my worm bin. And also, particularly with seeds, remember that seeds are the most nutritious, I think it's the most nutritious, if not, it's certainly up there, part of the plant because everything the plant is and needs to grow are in the seeds, right? So all that nutritional goodness is in the seeds and now I've made that nutritional goodness available to my worms on a much more expeditious time frame. All right. So what I'm going to do here, last thing, because I'm wrapping this up. This is, you know, almost done, is I'm adding some powdered eggshells. This is actually eggshells in this particular instance. But you can use uh, dolomite lime. You can use... Uh, Oyster shells, you know, things like that. And I also wanted to add a little bit of the azomite. Azomite has good micronutrients, minerals in it that, again, is very healthy for your worms and for your plants because all those uh, micro minerals that are in the azomite will then end up in the castings, which end up on your plants. Everybody's happy. So now what I'm gonna do is top this with a little bit more pre-compost to add in some additional, oh, I thought I had another bowl of it. You know what, give me a sec. I thought that was gonna be enough, but it's not. So, I'm going to just get my old bucket here and add in some more pre-compost on top. Okay. Now, I could add a little spritz of moisture to this, uh, but I'm not going to. And the reason being is the moisture is actually, again, a good level. And I am wanting to set this up 
to be ready for the next time to set it up to dry down and be able to do a sift out. Okay, so adding more moisture to this system right now is not the direction I want to go into. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is add some newspaper to keep the moisture that is in here, in here. And also, it does provide the worms with another carbon food source in case, you know, they want to munch on that instead of the microbes and the biota in the pre-compost or the food itself. You know, they have a whole buffet of choices here. And then the last thing, of course, is adding back on the plastic here. Because I am in Florida, and although it's been raining very much during our dry season, we have not yet had a dry season, I still, you know, have the AC on, and I want to keep, again, the moisture in. And also critters out. All right. So now this bin is set to go back on the shelf and it'll be in good shape for the next several weeks and we'll be able to see by not seeing how the fast food conversion of the avocado pits and skins and squash seeds went. Okay. Because if they're gone, they're gone. And that means the worms have the, those nutrients in their bodies, okay? As opposed to, you know, the avocado seed sitting in there for two years, not really doing anybody any good, all right? So that's it for tonight. I hope, uh, you know, this was some, you know, good information for you to, you know, turn foods that are longer term into shorter term by drying them down either by a dehydrator or using your oven if that's what you have and then powdering them up and getting them into your worm bin, into your worm bellies and, you know, out of your kitchen. All right. So have a good night. I remain, as always, yours in the dirt, Jane.